Good day, and welcome to the online launch of Civil Designer version 8.2. My name is Charles Scott, your host. Thank you very much for allowing the time today to join us. During the course of today's webinar, I'll be handing over to a number of my colleagues who will be introducing highlighted version 8.2 functionality. Right now, you should see our blue Civil Designer software welcome screen and the GoToWebinar floating toolbar. Please use the GoToWebinar floating toolbar to send us any questions you may have during the various presentations. And please download the Civil Designer software version 8.2 PDF, listing all the new versions functionality, plus a summary of development done over Civil Designer's last five versions. As per usual, we'll be uploading a video of today's webinar to our Civil Designer software YouTube page for your later reference. Before we begin presenting version 8.2's new functionality, I would like to hand over to Vincent Bester, the Civil Designer Software Group CEO, for a few words. Vincent, the floor is yours. Thanks, Charles. Good afternoon. We are all very proud of Civil Designer 8.2, which is the first multi-language version aimed at extending our footprint into the United Kingdom and Europe. To that end, we have opened an office in London and have had two very successful shows at Digital Construction Week and Highways UK. Everyone who visited the stands were blown away by the fact that design software could be so simple and yet yield such powerful results. But Civil Designer is about much more than just internationalization. It is about additional functionality that will make your lives easier and allow you to get the job done more quickly. It is about pushing the envelope on what can be achieved in infrastructure design. It is about giving you a better tool to get your designs completed in record time. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Vincent. We're now going to begin with the presentations of version 8.2's functionality. First off will be Darby De Toy, Civil Designer's Director of Software Development. Davi will be taking us through all the new developments on the 3D rendering, design verification, and animation side. Davi, please take it away. Thank you, Charles. Good afternoon, everybody. We as a development team are extremely excited about version 8.2 because in 8.2, we saw some major improvements in the Alicad graphics engine using state-of-the-art technologies. We could therefore add some new and very exciting visualization tools to our render view. Today I'll be showing you some new visualization tools in the render view, loading and rendering of reality mesh data, and some new enhancements to the Civil Designer fly-through functionality. So this is the table mountain DTM consisting of about 55,000 points. When you have hardware acceleration switched on, you can interact with a model using this view cube at the top by just clicking on the faces or on the corners. Traditionally, Civil Designer renders the terrain using tri a triangled mesh according to the display settings. If I will just, if you can see, it renders um, triangles at the moment. I just want to level my view there. You can save these views uh, by just clicking on the toolbar at the, at the bottom there. It will save that with the drawing. So if I go to the terrain settings there, this is how you how you control how the DTM will be displayed. In addition to plane shading, we also have natu natural simulation, which uses a height map. You can see we have some preset styles that you can use. Or we can go to custom, where we can control exactly how we want how you want this to be displayed. The height map or the natural simulation is much better if you have uh, big DTMs, big dense DTMs, because it's a lot faster and you can you can give it a very realistic um, look and feel to it by using these custom settings. Let's turn it a little bit again. I'm going to show you. You can save a make it. You can save a, a second a view like that. The second option we have is the environment option. This is what how you control how the background is displayed. 
we have some again some preset um, settings and preset styles there's night and sunny you can see that's how the it we control how the how we display the background I'll just go and show you that you can click on any of these saved views and it'll change to that view so we can also we can also go to control how the ground plane is displayed by clicking on one of these presets again there's a rough ocean um, we can go to the custom to custom and then actually be very creative on how exactly your background is displayed you can set the the haze saturation sky saturation or you can go and look exa see exactly what the sky box look like and control how how your what color your sun is you can set the scatter intensity the size and the disc blend it's all to do with how the sun is is, is displayed in the sky you can give it as I, as I did there, pink color to make very interesting views. So you can become really creative um, with this now. In the past, you would have needed a third party program to do this with, but with Civil Designer, you have this at your fingertips in render view. Next up, Reality Mesh Data. I'm just loading this drawing and going to render view. Reality Mesh Data is high resolution 3D models created from simple photographs or from point clouds. Civil Designer can load and render multi resolution 3MX data in our render view like this. We currently work with a company called AAM Africa who offers a wide range of spatial information technologies to make this type of data available to you. In Civil Designer, we currently load and render the data in the render view. We use a multi threaded loading rendering strategy with level of detail support. We will develop this further in future so that you can interact with this mod model a, a bit better, with this type of data a bit better. Just to give you an idea, I'm gonna e exit this and I'm gonna open another data set of the Cl Cape Flats. Just to illustrate to you how you would, how you can, over, in, how you can overlay your design on top of this in render view. So once again, I'm going to go. This is just the image. I can go to render view, where we load the data again. You can actually see the blocks appearing as we load and render different, different uh, levels of detail. So there um, is a roundabout. Another visualization tool is right click and then go to circle around and circle around will just circ do a 360 circle around your cursor position, which is quite a, quite a nice um, presentation tool. I'm going to exit render view and then switch on, go to display settings and just switch on my road designs. These are just quickly designed roads to give you an idea of what it will look like when we overlay a design onto the reality mesh. Go to render view again. And then if I go to, if I, if I change this view slightly, um, you can get the idea. I'm gonna go circle around again. And there you can see your, your newly designed road overlaying the reality mesh. Quite an interesting tool as well for validation. I can see very accurately there that my road banks are, are clearing the, the buildings there. Just level that view out. Okay, I'm gonna exit render view. Let's just close the other drawings that we've been working with. Next, I want to show you some fly through functionality in 8.2 for that i'm using this project this is um, the a13 in london near london and it consists of about 85,000 points and about 18 roads making up a detailed design of two interchanges 
it's loading it up. I'm going to go to render view. You will see the detailed design consists of roads, road markings, uh, road furniture, some trees, and road signs. So in 8.2, you can right click and go straight to fly along road, uh, road entity in this case, but you can fly along along any any entity you want that's available that's visible you can interact with it using this bar at the bottom i can go up and down left and right the camera will change and then i can use my wheel mouse to speed up or slow down so i'm slowing down to show you this bridge and then speeding up again to to there you, you can see the the road markings you can see the lamp post which are just blocks that's been added 3d blocks and you can see how smooth it is smooth the fly through is this is live data uh, from civil designer this is not this is not done by a third party application so i'm slowing down to a complete stop at this point i can just right click on any other entity like this road and say fly along this entity now now it's but it's taking the the off ramp I'm just speeding speeding up a little bit you can see the road markings that we've done we'll show you more about this later but this has been done using the uk installation and you will see the arrows are all according to uk standards as opposed to south african standards we ship the program with with the appropriate arrows for for the for the country i'm going to go up to the traffic lights and come to a stop okay let's go to a stop so you can even you can stop and then even reverse by carrying on with your mouse wheel so i can go to a to a previous position now at this point i can also release my my camera um, i can unfix my camera unlock the camera and then look around where where I am at I'm looking back at the on ramp or at the at the bridge there okay so I'm going to lock it again to the forward position and I can I'm going to go up a little bit so I can get a better view of the entity right click fly along this entity this is a this is a ring road that that with two bridges I'm going through the interchange there intersection another intersection and onto the second bridge all those the the traffic lights and the the road signs have been done in civil designer using the add road signs function okay i'm, I'm going to just back up a little bit and stop there unlock my my camera and then we can actually we can take a few photographs but just pressing, pressing control one uh, this view press control one and that'll say save it to that first slot on the bottom left so let's continue Again, this is live data. This is not, not been done in a third party application. This is directly from Civil Designer. Okay, I'm going to stop on this bridge again. Okay, there we go. Stop. Let's go up a little bit and then unlock a cursor. Then I can save this view, Control 2 to. Uh, the second slot at the bottom control three third slot and now you can always go back to these views again let's just finish and these views get saved with a drawing so you'll always have them available when you go to render view so i can go to them by just clicking again at the bottom or right clicking and clicking on them with these tools you will be able to create realistic presentations easily and do your design validation 
and have a lot of fun while doing it. That's all from me. Thank you. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Darby. That was fantastic. Up next is Christopher Smith, our Sales and Services Manager. Chris will be demonstrating the new functionality added to our Roads module. Chris, the floor is yours. Thanks, Charles, and welcome, everybody. In this section, I'll be looking at the road segments, after which I'll cover the new features found inside the road components. I will then look at the new road markings features. Let's start with the road segments. In this section, I'll be discussing the new feature, road segments. This new feature allows for the splitting of one road into many segments, while still sharing one common horizontal and vertical alignment, as well as one common edge level table and chainage system. Firstly, the design criteria. A road can have multiple design speed zones along its route. Secondly, the quantities. This can now be calculated in separate segments. And thirdly, intersection modeling. With the introduction of this new feature, the time taken to model an intersection with two roads that completely cross each other has now been greatly reduced. In this demonstration, I will show you how to create a road from polylines and automatically add the junction. I will then split the minor road into segments and model the crossings. Let's go ahead and have a look. Let's switch the auto junctions on. I'll do this by going to File Option Settings, selecting Roads and selecting the tick for Automatic Junctions. Create a new road. I'll do this by going to File, Select Road File. I'll click on the New Road button. We'll select the template and the curbs you want to use. Once selected, I will press OK and press OK to confirm. I'll close the dialog. Use the regression function to define the horizontal alignment from polylines. I'm going to select the Extract Alignments feature, select the Horizontal Alignment, select this from CAD, select the polyline, select Yes. And now I'll click on the Road Recalculate button, and the road is now displayed. After the calculations, it will automatically add a junction and a cul-de-sac. This road crosses itself. Notice that there are no vertical alignments yet. It simply connects the start and the end. Likewise, we create a second road. To file, select road file, I click on the new road button. I make sure that I'm happy with the template. It usually uses the template that was previously used. This is very good for when you're doing urban roads. I'll run the regression extract uh, alignments. I'll then select on the CAD, press OK, and then click on the recalculate button to display. Also notice the automatically created junctions and cul de -sac. Select the minor road and split into four segments. I'm going to go to File, Select Road File. I'll then ensure that the road that I want to split is highlighted. I'll press the Split button. I'll then go and graphically select the locations where I would like to split the road. I press yes to confirm the split. I'll then highlight the next section and I will then split that piece. The road will automatically be calculated and crossings added. Just the south intersecting crossing needs some manual work. Here, we'll manually add two junctions. I'm going to go to File, Add Junctions. I'll then select the minor road as well as the main road. I'll then change my curbs to one that is best suited for my project. I'll do this for the left hand side as well as the right hand side. After selecting my curbs, I will then accept the rest of the features for that intersection, such as the radius. I 
I'll then go ahead and choose to do this again for the other road. And I will just accept the settings that I created in the, the previous time that I made the intersection a few minutes ago. There we have our intersecting road. View the vertical alignment. You will see that the alignment continues through the segments. At the crossings, Civil Designer will automatically add VPI points. These VPI points will automatically be updated if your road's horizontal alignment changes, or they will be deleted should you delete the junction. Now we can design vertical alignments between the crossings in the normal way. For the entire road, all segments will be calculated from this alignment. I'm going to click on the move button and move the VPI in the sag a bit down. I'll go across here and just add another crest VPI into the alignment. I'll give it a length and here you can see when I move the VPI it pivots about the intersection. Verification. Switch on the contours. For self-intersecting roads you will have to manually recalculate the road in order to adjust the vertical alignment correctly. I'll select that road recalculate button. I'll then recalculate the road and then you'll see the contours are now working correctly on the model. Let's have a look at the other intersections, make sure that I'm happy with the contours and how they, the two roads merge with each other. Let's go and have a look at the render view. I use the left mouse key and the control and then I can also pivot around the intersections, look at the intersections in 3D. You can also use the circle uh, function that's now available in 8.2 to pivot around my intersection while inside the render view. Let's go over to the new tools found in the Road Component Editor. In the segment, we'll cover the creation of non-linear components. We'll then look at the new retaining wall preview. I'll also look at the median barrier with retaining wall and U channels. We'll also have a look at the ability to edit components and the foster quantities calculation. Let's have a look at the creation of a non-linear component. In this example, we have created a U channel using CAD lines and arcs. I'm going to select the CAD arc, right click properties, and at the top of the properties bar you can see that it is a CAD arc. In roads mode we'll go to tools, component editor. We want to use the component editor to create a U-channel component that will be incorporated into our road design. Firstly, we'll add a new name. We'll now go to the geometry, right click and import from the drawing. This is to import the CAD and create a component for the roads module. During the import from CAD, the process is very simple. Firstly, we specify the start point of the component followed by the connecting segments. All the dimensions are added to the specified sequence. There's no requirement that it must be clockwise or anti-clockwise. The arc entity will automatically be imported as line segments, ensuring a smooth representation. Once finished, you can right click and press add. As you can see, you have created a U-channel component. We'll specify a stop and start section for the completeness. Later on in this webinar, we'll cover the application of this U-channel. We've added the ability to specify whether the component's preview is in cut or in fill. This allows for a clear visualization and easy manipulation. If we right click and we choose to edit the preview, components such as retaining walls has variable height. This is achieved by using the extract next code, triple five. 
The preview of the component would always default to a cut situation implying that the extract next value is positive. Let's look at the component that is designed for a fill situation. Let's right click and edit. Notice again that the extract code is used again and the preview defaults is in a cut situation. In this example, this is not a true reflection of what the component would have looked like when applied to a design. Let's right click and preview in full. Let's go ahead and save this. This setting is then saved with the component itself. I'll now look at the median barrier with retaining wall and U channel. As a simple application of the components that we've seen, I'll now include the median barrier with the retaining wall and U channel template in the template library. Please be on a lookout for it once you've installed 8.2. Let's quickly have a look at the template, which includes the side drain and the barrier. Let's go and have a look at Sections Graphical Edit. Here you'll notice the side drain and the variable height retaining wall in application. Let's right click and render view. You can now view the model in 3D. Let's use the circle around function. Again, you notice that the curved U channel component and its retaining wall with the variable height. While in render view, let's choose the fly along feature. Running the fly through, we can see clearly how the retaining wall height changes automatically. In Civil Designer 8.2, you now have the ability to edit components that have already been applied to your road. We'll go to Section, Graphical Edit, Component Panel, and here we'll choose to edit the component. For this component, we are allowed to edit the geometry, quantities, and layer works. The cross sections will alter the design, so it is read only, but you can edit it in the template. Let's add some quantity calculations to the retaining wall. We'll define the volumes for the base and the wall. We'll edit a visual aspect of some of the components to make the application clearer. We can see that the cross section has been updated. We can see that the plan and the 3D model has been updated. Let's look at the quantity calculations that have been improved to be significantly faster. Let's go and have a look at the road markings. For our SA region installation, all the road markings have been developed and supplied as per the Southern African Development Community for Road Traffic Signs Manual. For our UK region installation, all the road markings have been developed and supplied as per the UK Traffic Signs Manual published by the Department of Transport. In this example, we'll be looking at the Traverse markings, and I'll be using the Southern African standards. Let's start with the construction lines. I'll change over to CAD mode, and I'll go to Geometry Lines. I'm choosing the point-by-point -point line. And now I'll use the parallel offset. I'll now go to roads mode and I'll go to signage stop line. Here you can see that there are four types of stop lines that can be added. We'll go through each one in application. When looking at the dimensioning, there are three options, rural, urban and custom, conforming to the SADIC RTSM manual and the custom options allowing you to specify your own width. Let's go ahead and draw a stop line. You are required to specify two points and the position for the symbol.
For the symbol, there are two tools that we use to position it accurately and we'll discuss them in detail afterwards. The first finds the lines which we are specifying as one and the other is to find the gap at a point which they are specifying a distance of 4.5 meters. Following the prompts, I'm using the island's display lines to find a point. I want it to be 4.5 meters away from the stop line. The find gap point displays the two points along the display line that is 4.5 meters away from the clicked point. Now we select the first point that we are using to find the lane tools. Next, we click on the second edge. The find lane tool indicates the midpoint. Let's go ahead and delete the geometry that we created earlier. To activate the other minor road, simply click on it and it will become active. For the second example, we'll use the display of the road lines as an alternative to the construction geometry lines. The circular, which I'm drawing now, is more used for the application of roundabouts. The through point determines the curvature of the road marking. To draw the stop symbol, for the symbol we are going to use the find lanes and the find gap point tools again. Following the prompts, this time we are going to use the display lines of the road that we have just enabled. This time we are going to specify the rotation graphically using the cursor method. When we used the keyboard method, the angle was automatically calculated to be perpendicular to the center line specified in the find lanes tool. Let's look at the find lanes and find gap tools in more detail. For the find lanes, we specify two points and the line between the points are divided to indicate the all lanes and the midpoint of the lane. A tip is to use the perpendicular snap in order to get accurate results. When we specify a point, we can specify the direction the symbol should face. Updating the value of the find lanes changes with the results automatically. For the find gap point, we specify distance and a line arc polyline, lightweight polyline, or a displayed line of the road. We will then specify a point on the entry and the gap points will be displayed on screen. These points are calculated as per the distance specified previously. Let's clean up the drawing before continuing. Signage yield line. Similar to the stop line, the yield line has four types. There are also multiple dimensions as specified in the SADIC RTSM. You can apply custom settings to the yield line length, gap and width. Let's look at the pedestrian crossings. The pedestrian crossings, we have two types, standard and skew. The width, length and gap defaults to the SADIC RTSM can be modified. We are required to specify two points. Again, the perpendicular snap is useful. The bars are spread out evenly from the center. Looking at the skew type, we are required to specify an additional skew point and the results will be always maintain a constant length and gap. View settings. All the markings are added to the drawing as CAD entities. They are grouped as 3D faces, poly meshes or inserts and can be edited using the normal CAD functionality. Let's switch off the settings and draw the meshes filled. We can see that all the markings are automatically draped on the surface of all the visible roads. If a marking is added from the road, then no draping will occur and the 3D face or block insert will be created instead. Let's switch on the settings to, to draw the meshes filled. 
in the render view, you can see that the results of the 3D switching on wireframe shows the detail and the power of these functions. In the next example, I'll be using the UK Traffic Signs Manual published by the Department of Transport's uh, road markings. We'll be looking at custom road markings. Let's look at adding road markings. We supply a library of arrow markings as defined by the Traffic Signs Manual, which can easily be extended and customized. We are going to add these as quickly as possible using the tools that we have already seen. The polyline we surveyed. Let's add a left arrow. Firstly, I'm going to add the turn 6 meter left arrow. Let's add some ahead arrows. We'll now add some road names. The next is to add the road names for the arrows, all of which is easy to space and align using the Find Lines and Find Gap Point tool. Let's go ahead and add a stop line. Lastly, we need to add some longitudinal lines. Let's go over to CAD mode, view settings and draw the mesh solids. Let's have a look at the complete model using the two functions, the linear road markings and the add road markings function. Again, this was constructed quickly and easily with all the road markings are beautifully draped over the road surface. Thanks everybody for your attention. Back to you, Charles. Thank you very much, Chris. That was great. I'm now going to hand over back to Darby, who is quickly going to demonstrate our enhanced LandXML data importation functionality. Darby? Thank you, Charles. In this, this session, I will be showing you the enhancements that we made to the import of LandXML data. In this example, I will be importing some LandXML data that was exported by, by Civil 3D. Uh, we will start off in Civil 3D. Here you can see an assembly with sub-assemblies um, equivalent to our civil designer template. Let's have a look at the cross-section. So in Civil 3D you can see the cross-sections with the, sub, uh, the assemblies and the sub-assemblies. Export LAN XML. We will export to this file. Save, overwrite, yes. Close Civil 3D for now. Now we're going to import this data into Civil Designer. We display a list of available roadways from the LANX ML file. We select the one that we exported. Civil Designer has detected that there is a complex cross-section data stored in the LANX ML file and allows you to control how the cross-sections are imported. Using the define cross-section function, it allows you to specify the cross-section points by simply, simply clicking on the nodes. The points don't have to be linked though. We also have the ability to change the import method to click on connected edges. Using the defined road edges tool um, allows you to place exactly where on which points your road edges are. Then define toe points, you simply, similarly you define where the toe points of your cross section are. Okay, we can see the road entity which is a horizontal alignment, a vertical alignment and edges. We extract the ground like you normally would, we go through the normal um, design procedures, civil designer, we generate the vertical alignment and the edge levels. 
specify the development method there okay then just want to go to the template paths this, this is a template that was created by the import routine from the civil design or from the civil 3d uh, sub assemblies and we apply template Once it's done, we can go through cross sections, and you can see this the cross sections that has just been applied, created by applied template from a template that was created from the land XML file with the uh, sub -assemb assemblies and sub assemblies. Okay, there's the, there are the cross sections for the entire road. So the entire road has been imported. Previously, we could only import the alignments. If we go back to Civil 3D, you can see that the import, the import routine, you'll notice that there is only an option to import horizontal alignments and no option to import the corridor. These enhancements should make it a lot easier for you to collaborate with your other software packages. Thank you, Charles. Back to you. Thank you very much, Darby. Up next is Cameron Boyle, one of our regional training and support managers. Cameron will be demonstrating our new DTM and Earthworks functionality, all incorporated in our survey and terrain module. Cameron, please take it away. Thank you very much, Charles. Hi, everybody. I'm super excited to show you the new functionality of the survey and terrain module inside the brand new Civil Designer 8.2. First up, I'm going to show you how you go about importing names via an ASCII file. In front of me, I have a survey. This survey doesn't have any names at this stage. So I'm going to show you how you go about importing the names. If in your survey mode, you go to file, you go and specify import. Now, some of you may be familiar with the ASCII heights function. This is very similar, but in this case, I'm importing the names. Which file would you like to use? Click on open. Right, so that is what my file looks like. Click on next. Here you would go and specify what to import. I'm not importing the Z coordinate, it's not necessary. The civil designer uses the Y and X values of the incoming data to locate the existing surveyed points. I then click on finish. And as you can see, I now have the names imported. The first of the strings function that I'm going to show you is how you go about displaying contours and slope arrows. In version 8.1, you had to convert your string into a terrain surface before you could do this. In 8.2, you'll be happy to know that it's no longer necessary. You simply go to your TV screen. You select your string settings. And on the bottom right, you go and select Draw Contours. Specify your display settings you'd like to use. And click on OK. You'll see then immediately you have your contours. At the same time, if you'd like to work with your slope arrows, I'll go back to my display settings. Go and switch off my contours. And switch on Draw Slope Arrows. Again, I can go and specify which display settings to use. The arrows are drawn on invisible triangles between the child and the parent string. If for stormwater purposes, you'd like to have them both displayed, you would then again go back to your display settings, go and select string settings, and then turn on your draw contours. Now, at any stage, if you need to change the parent string, you can do that. And you'll see that the contours and your slope arrows get updated dynamically. A lot of you out there really don't appreciate the next function. Perhaps you've been in a situation where you've gone and created a project, but you don't quite know which projection settings to use. Because it may be that you're working in North Africa or somewhere in the UK. In this case, we've made it easier for you and we give you a function called presets. If I go and select the presets button, you can go and specify in which region and country your project is situated. In this case, I'm going to go and select Sub-Saharan Africa. 
I'm then going to browse down to South Africa, 30 to 32 degrees east. And then I'm going to go and choose Hot Abyss Hook 94. Click on OK. If you would prefer to use the traditional way of setting up your projection settings, you can click on the traditional button. Alternatively, if you want to go and search for a region, we give you the option to go and type in, in this case, Britain. And Civil Designer will then give you the two options. I go and select OSGP. In that case, I am confident that my projection settings are correct. In version 8.1 of Civil Designer, when you are working with strings, you have to convert the string into a terrain surface and then calculate your volumes. In 8.2, you'll be very happy that volumes beneath the string family can be calculated. Not only that, but then you can also ask Civil Designer to optimize your cut and fill volumes. Let me show you an example. First of all, I'm going to go and calculate normal volumes between my string and surface number one. If you look at the output bar, we got about 3.2 cubic meters of cut and about 6,800 cubes of total fill. So now I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to ask Civil Designer to go and optimize the cut and fill volumes for me. I'm going to go and put in an optimization difference of 2%. In this case, what Civil Designer does is it calculates the volumes. If the volumes aren't within the 2%, it then takes the elevations of your surface and makes it higher or lower until the 2% is reached. If you look in the output bar again, this time you'd find that we've got about 940 cubic meters of cut and fill optimization. You'll also be very happy to know that we have an undo or redo function in this case, I'm going to go and close my strings. And then I'm going to ask Civil Designer to recalculate the optimization volumes. If you look at my plan view, you'll see that the hatch has been updated. It doesn't only include the banks, but the entire string surface. So if I were to go back to strings, I'm using the 2% again. Civil Designer recalculates, and in the output bar, I've got my new volumes. So in this case, I've got about 5,800 cubic meters of cut full optimization. Perhaps some of you have heard of a digital elevation map file, or DEM file. It is a type of compressed image file that contains X, Y, and Z point data. Previously, only a certain type of TIFF files were supported. As of version 8.2, various TIFF files are supported. I'm going to show you what it's all about. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and go and select a TIFF DEM. Go and specify which file to use and what surface I'd like to import it in. These are now terrain points on the DTM. As this particular site has about three and a half million points. If I were to zoom in, not only do I have the X, the Y, but I also have the Z coordinate. A lot of you diehard civil designer fans are really going to enjoy the next function. It is called the grade points, and it's done relative to another point. If you think back to your vertical grade function inside the strings module, this is very similar, but you're working with DTM points. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to go to graphical, grade from point. I'm going to do this to a new point. I'm going to use the bottom right point here as a reference. I go and click on the reference point. I go and specify a particular grade. And then I'm going to go and create new points. So I go and click on my point. What Civil Designer does is it uses your 1 in 50 grade. It calculates the length from your last click. And then it automatically goes and inserts the height. You can go and specify a name if need be. In your output bar, you'll see that the new information has been generated as well as a dialogue. And then click on OK. Go to the next point. 
same thing happens and a new point is inserted with the height. Of course, you can do this in any direction. I'm going to go and change my grade and go and click on a point higher up. Still using this function, I'm not only going to show you how you go about editing existing points. Specify your grade, click on your reference point, and go to an existing point. Civil Designer goes and shows you the new and the old level of your existing point. Now, using that new point, I'm going to use that as my reference point and then change my grade and go and click on the existing survey points. As I'm doing this, you can see the new elevations in my output bar. And this is really going to help you. So you no longer have to do manual calculations. In 8.1, you were able to rename your child string, but you weren't able to rename your parent. So we've listened to our clients and we now give you the option. If I go and select my child, I go to the properties, I could then go and rename my child string. If I do the same for my parent and I go to my properties, you'll see I'm not able to change the parent string name. In 8.2, you now go to strings, string editing, and you specify rename parent string. In this case, I'm going to go and rename it as platform. If I now go and select the parent string, I go back to my properties, you can see the new name of the parent being platform. Who would have known you were able to rename your parent? And on that bombshell, Charles, back to you. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. Yes, Cameron, who would have thought? And thank you. We're now going back to Chris for his second presentation today, which will cover all the new functionality added to our pressurized water module. Chris, back to you. Thanks, Charles. Afternoon, everybody. Today, we're going to discuss some of the new features with Civil Designer's water. We've had a number of requests for some new features, adding on to what we did in 8.1. I will now cover some of these features. I'm going to have a look at the new quantities for the house connections. As you know, you've got your quantities um, for the pipes, the bends, and now we have quantities for the house connections as well. You can check how many pipes are long and short. You can also check the saddles for the pipes and what diameters they will be saddling onto the pipe. You can also check the total length of pipe for the connections to the houses that you'll be using. You can now also globally select and change your connections graphically on your screen. Here we've got the category types. I'm going to go ahead and change the category types for different parts of my network for the house connections. So I can select. I know it selected some of the earth boundaries CAD, but that's not a problem. We'll go across to the connections defaults. We can then go ahead and change to a low um, volume. I can then go and select an area where I want a high volume of water takeoff for the larger properties. I'm going to change that to a high demand. And now we can go and have a look at the connections dialog. Here you can see your spreadsheet for the outputs have changed and updated.
if we touch on the house connections, the graphically adding your house connections, in the previous version, we had the ability to create double hoof connections. Choose your value of your draw off. Select the boundary with the road and the boundary with your neighbor. We also have the ability to do single connections to each property. And now in 8.2, we have the ability to do custom connections, which you can also remove should you have done it incorrectly and you can simply redraw it again. If we run the time simulation, we can now have a look at our results. In terms of pressure at the nodes, we have added two extra types of pressure displaying. Let's go and put our display settings on. For the nodes, if we can now choose the pressure in uh, head in meters, we can also choose the residual head in meters and we can choose the pressure in bar. So there you'll see that you've got your pressure, which is your head in meters, plus the level above means sea level. Then we have the normal residual head in meters and your pressure in bar. Let's go and have a look at our data spreadsheets. You'll see that we now have added the hydrants and the street taps as well. So you can also change your categories for your hydrants and your street, street taps at this location. For the data spreadsheets for boreholes, I'm just going to change over to a different project. Here we can see we've got multiple boreholes and we're using the same pump throughout the system. So you can have different boreholes and different pump types as well. Let's go and have a look at the new tables that we've created. We choose the plan sheet file. Go and quickly create a viewport for this new drawing. I can then now switch on the lists, these new lists that we've created for your project for the setting out information. Here we have the list created. We can now simply select and move to a more desired location on your layout. I'm just going to change to CAD mode and move it to a better location. These tables are dynamically linked to your model in the model space. If you change anything in your model, it will update in these tables. Thanks for your time. I hope uh, you will come to enjoy these new features found in Civil Designer's water module. Back to you, Charles. Fantastic, Chris. Thank you very much. Our one-stop civil infrastructure design and BIM software package in action is something we're very proud of and are extremely confident in its ability to deliver based on its proven track record. We do, however, believe that a design software application is only as good as its backup and support which is something we have always placed a massive emphasis on. As a client of ours, if you have an issue, we at Civil Designer have an issue. Rod Harris, our Head of Marketing, is now going to provide a quick overview of our support services, where to find them and how best to utilize this resource, available to all our new and existing clients. Over to you, Rod. Thank you. I'm going to take a few seconds to run through the technical support resources beyond phone and email. Some of these are now included directly as links from the program interface. Firstly, the F1 hotkey. You can hit F1 at any point, so I'm just going to open a dialog. Hit F1, and you'll see that it takes you directly now to online help relating specifically to the functionality that you're using at that moment. Then have a look at the menu items here. You'll see additional support resources listed. So the Tech Tips page is a resource of how-to material dealing with common support queries.
if you wish to log a support ticket, you can do so here. Also remember that simply emailing helpdesk at civildesigner.com will insert your issue into the ticketing system. For more tricky issues, you can launch the remote sharing TeamViewer app, and then you can share your screen with our support team. Then there's a portal page, which includes links to all support, all the support resources. Notice there's two YouTube pages. One is the older knowledge based software channel, which has some useful tutorials on it. And then the civil designer software YouTube channel, which has demonstrations of the latest features and functionality. Make sure you're following us on LinkedIn for events and industry news. And you could also subscribe to the monthly email newsletter for information about current and future software updates. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Rod, Darby, Cameron, Chris, Alistair, James H and Keishan for all your assistance with today's webinar. More importantly, thank you to you, our webinar attendees, for your valuable time today and record attendance. Please go to www.civildesigner.com to download today's demonstrated version, version 8.2. Once again, our one-stop civil infrastructure design software package in action is something we're very proud of, and we truly enjoy demonstrating its very powerful capabilities to anyone involved in the civil infrastructure design industry. So please send us an email using info at civildesigner.com should you wish to see a more detailed software demonstration or you require any additional information or assistance. Please also visit our YouTube page for today's webinar, which has just been posted. We will leave the session open for the next 30 minutes should you wish to send any further questions. From Civil Designers HQ, thank you for attending and have a great day. Goodbye.